Hi everyone, this is Ronnie with Everything Virtual, and today I am pleased to report that at Stormland, uh, the latest Oculus exclusive title in VR from Insomniac Games is about to be released, and it is everything that you would hope for from a game like this and more. Uh, essentially, Insomniac has put together kind of a, a showpiece for all of the awesome mechanics that we've seen in, in tons of other VR titles, found a way to um, kind of fuse them all together into one awesome story-driven, uh, narrative-focused, I guess for lack of a better term, uh, first-person uh, adventure title uh, where you're exploring a, a, a large open world and it's just really a lot of fun. Uh, this game is really incredible and we're still in the in the process of playing the game and getting through it uh, but, but we wanted to kind of put something short here together for you guys especially since we've been making a push on YouTube uh, to uh, to show you kind of some of what we've been doing uh, Damon put together some clips uh, that you can enjoy here and we're going to post an interview that we had the pleasure of recording uh, at Oculus Connect 6 just, uh, I guess, you know, a month and a half, two months ago uh, now uh, with Mike Daly from Insomniac Games. He's the lead designer on the game. And he really, really uh, went into detail with me about what motivated them to, to, to make Stormland, kind of what brought them to... Uh, where where they were in terms of the decisions they were making. And, and really, like I said, after playing it there at Oculus Connect and then now getting a chance to uh, deep dive into the final game, uh, you know, they really have something special here. So uh, without further ado, here's the interview from Mike. Hope you enjoy. And uh, for those of you who are new to, to us, to everything virtual, we do lots of in-depth interviews like this, uh, gameplay, uh, impressions, reviews, and just chat about VR in general. So again, if you if you haven't heard us, we have tons of uh, backlogged episodes uh, on iTunes uh, is where we usually upload stuff. But like I said, we're also uh, doing video now. So uh, with that, uh, here's the interview and enjoy. Hi everyone, this is Ronnie with Everything Virtual. I'm here at Oculus Connect 6, and I just got out of a Stormland demo, and I'm here with Mike Daly from Insomniac Games to talk about the game. Mike, thanks for, for taking a moment to, to sit down with us. Uh, you know, could you just kind of talk about what your role is at Insomniac Games, in particular in connection with Stormland, and I guess your, your background in VR generally? Yeah, sure. So, um... I'm the lead designer um, on Stormland. I've been on it since the beginning, and even earlier than that, um, I was closely involved with a lot of the different like prototypes and concepts that eventually sort of like came together to form what would become Stormland. Additionally, I was lead designer on Edge of Nowhere and on Spoken, which are both VR games from Insomniac. So I've been working in VR with Oculus for about five years, and this is Insomniac's fourth title, and definitely our, our biggest, most ambitious, and best one yet. Yeah, no, Insomniac, I mean, since, since the beginning of consumer VR, you guys have kind of been on the forefront of releasing very, you know, high quality, you know, kind of AAA, you know, type titles um, where, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of that, especially early on uh, when the headsets were released. So that, so that was, I mean, one thing from the consumer standpoint that kind of stood out is that you guys were really invested on, on making quality products and bringing them to the VR space. Um, I, I guess, uh, you know, what has your experience been like from the beginning until now, and what are you able to do in Stormland that, you know, that, that perhaps you weren't able to do in some of those earlier projects? Yeah, so the highest quality possible has been Insomniac's, like, bread and butter since the beginning. Like, we, we always seek to distinguish ourselves by making sure that we stand out in quality, you know, even if that causes it to take more, more time or more money. So from the beginning... We knew that the Rift was coming out. It needed high quality, impressive titles that, that could message to gamers that 
uh, they were going to get an experience on par with what they were used to in sort of AAA console games. And that was what sort of birthed Edge of Nowhere, where we wanted sort of like something that felt like a little more traditional, like something they were used to. So we gave you the third person avatar where you could see them performing all their actions. Yep. And then we wanted to enhance that with the stuff that we were discovering VR did really well, like building, you know, a fully realized 3D atmosphere around you and really leaning into like that that atmospheric sense with like good music and sound and uh, sort of like landscapes. When the touch controllers were were getting figured out and preparing to launch, they talked to us again where we wanted to basically take this idea of now that you can move your hands around in game, like what can we do with that to to just to, to make something like new and impressive that people have never done before. So the unspoken, like at, at its very core, was about using that physical feedback of using your hands to play the game to to send a signal to your brain basically to convince you that you are the one like casting these spells using your body. So you use like a variety of gestures and interactions and um, really can like gave you a, a sense of like what the potential of the touch controllers were. All throughout both of those projects, you know, one of the big limitations that we, we adhered to was, you know, we, we need to be very cautious about how the player moves around. Um, and, you know, it was common knowledge that this is, this is a difficult subject to tackle. But as we developed them, we also got the sense that, you know, there was kind of some a building desire within the community to have a game that was really expressive, like really freeing, where you could go anywhere you wanted. Um, and this is, you know, deeply entrenched in Insomniac's heritage as well, where traversal is always like a core aspect of the games that we make. So, so that is sort of like the synthesis of Stormland, is that we had this excitement about what could we do to bring out freedom of movement for the player? And what could we do to give players sort of like that deep, rich, super high quality experience that they're used to or that they want from like the console space that, that Insomniac is capable of delivering um, in a way that nobody else can. So those were sort of like the two, the two seeds that came together. And it lined up with what the team was excited to work on. It lined up with what we wanted to play in VR. And, you know, I, I, I feel like that's the you know we got that message loud and clear from the community they wanted like deeper games that had that broke through those limitations so that that sort of like got us started on the path we did a bunch of prototyping and a bunch of experiments we brought in like you know tested mechanics that we had tried out for different games and ended up with a system like a foundational traversal system that was driven by your hands, which made it intuitive, it made it precise, it made it comfortable. And once that movement foundation was in place, that enabled us to create a world around you that was huge in scale and had all sorts of like interesting new like shapes to explore. Just mm -hmm. because like that fully 3D like depth sensing motion um, just enables like new types of landscapes and new types of like paths and traversal motions. So then then it was about basically like rewarding and validating that that urge to explore with deep systems of enemies to find and fight, upgrades to make, like things to discover that contribute to the depth and the lore of the world. And basically once that all comes together, you have this like nice, deep, rich experience that you can play for a really long time. Very cool. And, and how different was it trying to uh, to develop that traversal system compared to, I guess, I don't know if you worked on any of the traversal systems or the world building in some of Insomniac's more traditional games, but I'm just curious, how, how challenging was it to kind of figure out what worked and what didn't work when you are the, the in-game avatar rather than, you know, a third person like, like Spider-Man or something else? Right, yeah. Well, so even within the console space, each one of our titles we do, we, we learn a lot from the design perspective about how different moves feel, but as far as like the functionality, we, we more or less like 
start from scratch with each franchise. So, like, yes, Traversal is a core part of, like, Ratchet and Clank because it's sort of a platformer, but almost none of the moves are in common with, like, Spider-Man, who yeah. has his own completely different set of things. So Stormland was, is kind of like in the same procession of things, where we had a bunch of notions about what we thought would feel good just based off of past experience, but as far as how things behaved, we started from scratch with a bunch of different prototypes, and you know, it was challenging, as it always is, but you know, that prototype phase is also super exciting, just because... For example, like the first time we were trying out like hand-driven flying mechanics, and I could just like hold my hands out and like shoot like Iron Man thrusters to move myself through rings and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it was like magic. I mean, yeah. we knew we were on to something that was going to be super special. No, I can I can tell you just from playing the demo, like for a, you know a, a more extended period than I had in the past. This time, I really felt like I mean, from the beginning of the demo until the end, I feel like I was covering so much space, and I really was in a completely different place and, and and like you were saying the way like after a while getting used to the mechanics and being able to I was shocked at like how how high I could I could throw myself yeah. up and and actually see the world like like realize not only did I do this but it like in that moment not only did I feel like I was so high up there but I felt like I could just see an endless amount of area around me and it was it was really like you know it was something special so yeah, and, and that, that sort of, like, skill ceiling keeps building up. Like, the moves flow into each other so smoothly that by the time you have played it for, for a while, just the, the feeling of capability of seeing that distant, interesting shape and being able to, like, gain speed by diving through the air and swooping up and landing on the cloud surface and boosting and then, like, catching onto a cliff and flinging up. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's just, it's really empowering and, and really opens this, like, Pandora's box of, like, all the space you can see now gets that much more exciting knowing that, like, you can jet right to it and yeah. look all around it and get inside it. Yeah, I had a question just about, in general, like, so when, so moving on to this project and realizing that, you know, this type of exploration and these types of, of traversal mechanics are something that the, the players out there are interested in in VR now, um, do you think... Did you have to kind of wait for VR players to be able to to take advantage of a game like Stormland to finally develop something like this? Like, like I, the reason I'm saying that is because like I, I'm kind of curious as to like if players would have been ready for a game like <laughs> this like three years ago versus now when you know I've I've experienced quite a bit and I'm used to moving around and and so getting thrown into this game like you know you, you can kind of like it's still mind blowing right but I can only imagine like I, yeah could you speak I guess a little bit about what your experiences have been like in terms of bringing maybe new players into the game that haven't really tried VR or if this is or, or, or if we're, yeah, I know I'm getting a little rambly here because yeah. it's so many, so many thoughts in my head. But um, I've, I've always thought how I've always thought about how interesting it is to see uh, the VR consumer base kind of adapt and, and change from from when these headsets came out to now. Like, like at the beginning, everything was teleport, and yeah. and people back then were very happy with that, and this is the way to move around and. And then you started seeing freeform locomotion, and some people couldn't really take it. Some people could. You started seeing more and more games go that direction, and I feel like this some of these tra uh, traversal mechanics that you guys are implementing and others like are starting to kind of, like it's necessary in order to build the big worlds that everybody wants. But at the same time, um, yeah, it's it's. It, it's it's some it, there's somewhat of a challenge in terms of getting players kind of up to speed in terms of how to move around in that type of environment. So yeah. So I, I didn't know if you could speak a little bit about about what your what your team like how why they felt now was the right time to make a game like this and what some of the challenges are um, in in VR specifically that there might not be in other mediums. Yeah. So Stormland targeting sort of that that changing interest in um, the, the the level of control people were looking for in traversal is no coincidence basically even early on um, 
you know, Oculus, and, and we sensed that there was going to be a growing demand for it. And that, that is what we discussed, even, like, from the very early days of the project years ago. Um, and as time went on, you know, we've seen more and more that um, there, there is the, the speculative concern about um, traversal and comfort issues hasn't been quite as, um, as like, I guess, like, poisonous to games as, as once was concerned. Um, and, you know, we've learned a lot about what makes it comfortable anyway. Yeah. So, so even now, from the beginning, we wanted to make a game that, for people who were, like, VR curious, we could say... You know, the wait is over. This is what you've been looking for. This is what you've wanted. Like, jump in and play it. And even if you don't have VR experience, the the fact that most of the motion mechanics are driven through the motion of your hands turns out, I think, to be comfortable for a lot of people. Like, it's not universal, but I've seen a lot of first-time players play the game and come away not only figuring out how to do it very quickly, but just sort of getting lost and not worrying about like awesome. their comfort level. Yeah. So, um, so although it is not a perfect solution, there's definitely some motion sickness issues out there for some people. Sure. Um, I, I think that this game strikes a really good balance of accessibility, of comfort, and the the extreme sort of level of like control and agency you get from like sort of loosening the the constraints a little bit. Okay. And one of the things that I that kind of get brought my attention um, when I first heard about Stormland and saw the announcement of the game, uh, I don't know, it's been a while at this point, but um, were the in-game avatars because to me they looked super kind of tactile and like mm -hmm. the fact that in the game you're like a robot. Uh, I'm assuming it's a robot, and that's yeah. kind of. Um, but yeah, just the the mechanical nature of like looking down at your arm and seeing kind of you know how the arm is structured and how it moves, and and now in game seeing the entire body essentially, and and playing with someone else and watching th their in game avatars interact in a really believable fashion. Um, I, I, were some of those design decisions based around the fact that you knew kind of how in-game avatars tended to, like, what they would allow for in VR, and then you kind of built the idea of having the robotics around that, or uh, what was, yeah, kind of what led to some of those choices, and what, what are some of the cool things that you think have kind of developed out of them? Yeah, so as far as having, like, a fully articulated body, from the beginning, we wanted to target a high bar for fidelity and a high bar for presence. And this investment in technology to get the position of all your joints as close as we could sort of reflected that and, and just let you sort of passively absorb the fact that you are immersed in this world. So we thought it was a great idea to start with for those reasons. Um, as far as you being an Android, the reason that works is because we, we also wanted to give you this feeling, and, and this is sort of a game-specific thing more than a VR-specific thing, that you were sort of rebuilding your own body to sort of, like, meet the challenge of these enemies in the world. So you are attaching new parts and attachments that enhance your abilities. You're, like, swapping out your arms, and we wanted you to feel like that, that sort of, like, comfort level and suspension of disbelief when you jump off a cliff and, yeah. you know, can fling yourself 20 meters in the air. So all that sort of came together. And then um, because we had those things, when you get in the game with another player in co-op, the full, fully articulated body, like the body language that comes out of that is, is so much more like, it, it gives you a much better sense of presence. And oh, like, yeah. you can really see somebody's like, how they're gesturing, how they're nodding, like just reflected in, yeah. in a way that's so much more, sh more um, impactful. I was going to say it's like super expressive hands. because yeah, I, yeah, for a second there, we're here at the trade show and the audio on my end wasn't working, 
Um, and so I was I was playing with someone else in the game, and I was forced to kind of use you know my body as a means of communicating with him, who I could hear just fine. Yeah. And quickly I realized like I could I could tell him quite a bit from my in-game avatar's body language. Like yeah. Like a lot more than just the simple usual like yeah nod up and down or put a thumbs up or something like I literally I felt like I could I could really yeah I felt super expressive I felt like it was me just I, I couldn't speak <laughs> for right. my yeah so, but which was super helpful because like I said I didn't feel helpless at all in that situation so it, it was really yeah having having someone else there in the game uh, made a huge difference and I, I didn't know from the beginning did you guys always envision uh, Stormland to be to, to have a co-op uh, co-op uh, you know campaign or a, a large multiplayer aspect to it or is that something that came up later so comp was on the table from the very beginning because we thought you know it had a ton of potential we were still trying to figure out the like the, the specific vision of how this would all come together it was part of the way through the development process that we we started playing it and just sort of thought about like what what are our goals how are we going to be able to like really get people invested in this deep game and play it for a long time and and co-op just aligned with that so nicely um, and so we, we sort of made the commitment to make sure that everything synced properly, that, you know, we got the body looking great from a third-person perspective. Um, and, and I think that was definitely the right call. I mean, a big part of our game is we want to make something that you can enjoy playing for a really long time. What, one of the primary contributing factors to that is how dynamic can you make things? Because so you don't want to have, like, the exact same experience over and over. So many of the game's systems are built on this idea of let's give you something new and give you something fresh. And co-op supports this more or less in like the ultimate way because another human person making decisions and interactions is like the ultimate dynamic agent in a game. Like there are so many like clever, unique things that people can do when they're playing together that just didn't exist before that it just extends the life of the game and how much fun you can have with it by a ton. Yeah. No, I could already tell. Like it, it, it really felt like there was a lot of ways that me and another person could interact with everything that was around us in a very net, so I can only imagine. And, and yeah, I think one of the things that really stood out to me too is because of the cohesive design front, like connections between the in-game avatars and also the rest of the world, like the, the enemies, for mm -hmm. example, are also like, I don't know if they're androids or robots or, but they're, they're mechanical, right? And they're yeah. just like your other, to me, I think that stood out because there wasn't any kind of uh, disconnect in my brain between how humans in the world were interacting, like like live players, and the rest of the environment, like yeah. it was very, it, like we, I, I felt like everything really blended together in a way that sometimes in game avatars in VR don't. Yeah. And so, so anyway, that that was something that I thought was really really special. Yeah, I mean, pretty much in all games, the feeling of immersion isn't necessarily based off of the feeling of being realistic. It's about the feeling of, like, consistency. Mm -hmm. Like, your brain sort of builds up a model for the rule sets, and less, the less the game violates that, the more you can just sort of go, like, go with the flow and believe it. Yeah. And, and so, we, you know, we tried really hard to make sure that that consistency was in place just to keep you immersed as much as possible. In, in, in a game with, a, like, a, a world as big and complex as Stormland, um, how difficult is is it to kind of draw the line in terms of where you stop with interactivity? Like, what are what are things that that like obviously not everything in the world uh, right. is interactive. So I guess like as a as a like what what have you guys found to be kind of the the sweet spot in Stormland for for when something needs to be interactive and when something necessarily doesn't have to be the, for for performance sake for right. your own sanity? I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> um, so. The, the first sort of rule where we draw the line is when a thing is needed to support or enhance like the core gameplay systems. So if, if you need to interact with something for the sake of like good traversal or you know getting to the locations that you want to get to, then you know obviously you will make it interactive. Um, same goes for the, the elements that support combat, the elements that support like exploration and world building. Um, once those needs are met, 
sort of the, the next tier is like things that players intuitively expect to be interactive. You want to hit those because, you know, if you put something with a handle, you know, players are going to grab it and see what happens. Yeah. Um, so we tried to basically take those things that people expect, line them up with the things that we needed to happen for gameplay, like, you know, opening chests or like opening doors or activating switches or whatever. Um, and then as for anything that fell outside of that sort of like core opportunity and that core need, we, we just tried to, you know, fit in as many things as we could afford. Okay. <laughs> Which, you know, it's a huge game. That yeah. That didn't add up to a, like a ton, but, um, yeah, yeah. you know, we want to do as much as we can. Okay. Um, there, there is definitely also performance considerations in there. Like, yeah. I, I think that we have done a great job of having a really dense, detailed world. Oh, yeah. And, and to hit that, you know, less stuff is interactive than you would like, but I think the trade-off is definitely worth it when you just look at the, yeah, look at the frame. Because it definitely adds to your sense of immersion when you feel like you're in a real yeah. place. So, and it, yeah, so it's a balance. But it definitely, the like you said, the, uh, the what was the word you used? I guess just the density of the environment. The the density of the effect, like you feel like you're you're part of a place rather than just yeah. standing. So no, it's it's definitely there's like anywhere you look in the game, I feel like there's something going on. When yep. so, which is really impressive. And I guess on the that note of performance, and uh, today uh, Oculus announced the Oculus Link, which is going to be a way for Quest owners to connect to. Uh, the, their headsets to the PC to use it as kind of a, a PC headset, essentially. Is is that something that you guys are excited about uh, in terms of being able to bring, you know, such a high fidelity experience like Stormland uh, to users who might not have, who might have a PC but not have necessarily invested in, you know, a, a headset other than the Quest? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, this this announcement I think is great for Stormland and for everybody developing for Rift. I mean, yeah. the Quest. I think it's an awesome piece piece of hardware that appeals to a lot of people and having access like giving giving it an easy path for all those people to enjoy our game um, is fantastic like I, I am super excited about that and I think it's purely just like upside all around yeah no I totally agree even for people out there that might have a quest and like a like a, a non oculus headset like this is just a really easy way uh, besides like you know, other ways out there to be able to play your game now on, on those headsets, which is awesome. Yeah, for so. sure. It's it, it was a, a super exciting keynote, and, and I'm really glad that, um, you know, we're able to bring Stormland to as many people as possible. Because yeah. we think, um, you know, as we've talked about, the first time you get in this world that is, that is so dense and you have the ability, you learn that you have the ability to go anywhere, um, I think a lot of people are going to try this out and just have their minds blown. And the more people we get to do that to, you know, the, the happier I'll be. Yeah, well, I'm really excited about it. I know you guys must be super, super like, you must be clamoring, I guess, at this point to, yeah. <laughs> to get everything ready. So. Yeah. Because hey, the game's coming out it's is November, correct? Yep, November 14th. Um, it's $39.99 on the Oculus Store. You can pre-order it now. Okay. We're, we're super pumped. <laughs> what, what are some of the last, I, I don't know, what are, what are the things that you guys are most focused on, I guess, right now to get it ready ready for November? <laughs> well, fortunately, as we are basically almost at the finish line yeah. right now, it, it's come down to making sure things are as stable as possible, um, making sure that um, the little, like, user experience things are smoothed over and that, you know, there are not, like, bugs or glitches. Which means that, like, when you play the game right now, everything's there and everything's working together, which is always, like, a really fun part of the life cycle of any game because you suddenly realize, like, you know, th there's always, like, this level of doubt. Like, is it all going to come together? Yeah. Are these things we think are going to support each other going to support each other? They don't always do that, yeah. but um, when they do, and it's, a, it's an amazing thing, and, and when I go in to playtest the game, even just to, like, check on a bug or something that should take, like, 30 seconds, I find myself, like, <laughs> getting lost and playing just for fun, even though I could have done that, you know, even though I've been doing that for years. Yeah. Um, so... I think it's a good sign that... No, I, I can tell you as somebody that, like, yeah, I, I get to try out a lot of things, and it's not often where, like, I, I you know, I, ha I had a kind of a tight schedule in terms of, okay, I need to play this for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, and then, and then get this interview done and then move on to something else, and... 
completely forgot about like if you guys wouldn't have stopped me in there <laughs> like like I honestly completely lost track of time and I yeah I can't wait to play the game when it comes out at home so awesome yeah, yeah. so thanks very much for, for talking with us and yeah hope to talk to you again in the future awesome my pleasure